Thanks, your honorable speakers, for taking the seat. Now I'd like to request Mr. Muhammad Mustafisuddin, founder and CEO of Bangladesh April Exchange, to please come up for his welcome speech. With a round of applause, please welcome Mr. Muhammad Mustafisuddin. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning to you all. It's a historical event. Um, I don't know how many of you knows that it is the first in the world climate action summit happening dedicated to fashion industry. And I'm very proud that Bangladesh is hosting this kind of conference. My heartfelt gratitude to our esteemed chief guest, Mr. Shahri Alam MP, a state minister of foreign affairs, of People's Republics of Bangladesh. I would also like to thank uh, Mr. Thais, Deputy Ambassador, MBC of Netherlands in Bangladesh, also a good friend, and uh, also Mr. Mikhail, Head of Development Corporation, Delegation of European Union in Bangladesh. Ladies and gentlemen, my friends, partners, honorable speakers, supporters, all of you, thank you so much for being over here. We all know about the climate crisis. Today we have 45 to 50 international speakers, experts. They will explain about it. I will say a few words about uh, our fashion industry. And uh, you maybe know that Bangladesh is one of the most vulnerable in terms of the climate crisis. Though we are not responsible for that, we emit only 0.3% of carbon in the whole world. But we stand out, our brands, retailers from different parts of the world had announced their climate target by 2030, 50% or SBT target 1.5%. We are with them. We would like to support their vision because we believe Bangladesh is second largest apparel manufacturer in the whole world. And we cannot deny this. But by the same time, I will request that bands, retailers should also support this journey. It's a journey, it's a transformation which Bangladesh wants to do, but we need support from them. You know that in a manufacturing country like uh, Bangladesh, uh, we have uh, 60 to 70 percent uh, carbon emissions uh, happened in the, this part of the world. And uh, we need to um, address these issues. Our manufacturers are willing to do that, but we need a lot of financial support and uh, financial grants for transforming these things. Our government already showed a lot of leadership on that. You maybe know that we have 300 million of uh, GTF fund, GFA fund. So there are lots of funds available from the government to transform this industry to be more green. And our manufacturers are also doing the same things. We are, uh, you know that Bangladesh is now having 202 green factories. We had already showed the leadership on that, transforming the factories into a renewable energy. And Bangladesh is not a renewable resource country. So the journey is not very smooth for us. But no matter what, uh, we already showed our leadership and we are uh, doing that. I just came from uh, different conferences last one month. I was in Bogota in Colombia, and then I was uh, in uh, Sustainable Apparel Coalition Conference in uh, Boston. And quite often I see the conferences, we talk about climate action changes, mitigate or resilience, but manufacturers are always missing from this discussion. And I'm happy that today it is happening 
in a manufacturing countries, all these conferences, there are always 700 people, 800 people, one and two manufacturers. And I believe the manufacturers should be included in the discussion, in setting up the target, and also how we can overcome these situations. Without the support or including the manufacturer, the journey towards net zero is almost impossible. Bangladesh Climate Action Forum, this is the first summit, but we had already secured our partnership with different organization for the next three years. It's not only a forum where we discuss about the problem, it's a forum where we discuss about the solutions. We discuss about the collaborations and how we can overcome the situation together along with government development partners, brands, retailers, and manufacturers. Throughout all the day, you all will be uh, having five panel discussions, two keynotes. We'll talk about decarbonization. We'll talk about climate resilience. And obviously, most vulnerable, our workers. You may be, uh, some of you must be uh, know that uh, recently a report published by Jason Jude um, on the uh, risk of uh, climate crisis uh, for Bangladesh and also the subcontinent. So Bangladesh, Vietnam, Cambodia, and Pakistan, together, we supply 18% of the global apparel demand. And we have high risk. The report said that if we don't take action at the moment, by 2030, all this reason, we lose 65 billion dollar of export and it will impact more than 10,000 plus apparel and footwear manufacturers and 10.5 billion of workers. So we will obviously talk about decarbonization and at the same time let's talk about also resilience and our workers. Uh, finally, I would like to thanks to PDS, Lord's Foundation, AI, EPIC, and Oxfam. Without uh, your support, uh, this event would not be possible to happen. And I would like to thanks to my team, because the, I've, I've been doing this kind of seminar, summit, conferences, exp uh, exposition last 15 years. So this is the very first time. I think I just get off from the flight and I enjoy the privilege as a guest and, and be here. So this summit is also, I was very determined, lest the boys does this, I want to see how far they learn. So I must congratulate my team, especially Farooq, uh, Khaled, uh, and uh, his other team member. You guys done a wonderful job. I'm very proud of you. And finally, I would like to conclude my speech by showing you a video. You maybe know that Bangladesh Apple Exchange had done their first initiative outside Bangladesh. I'm very privileged and thankful to our Honorable State Minister, Mr. Shahriar Alam. He was present there in person uh, for, uh, for the uh, Best of Bangladesh last two days in Amsterdam. And I would like to show a small video of the event, which is always memorable of my life and also for Bangladesh. So can you please show the video? Welcome to the best of Bangladesh. In Europe. I have many more things to offer to this industry and my country, Bangladesh. The Netherlands is honored to have been a long-standing partner of Bangladesh. The best of Bangladesh is not an event, it's a process. We see Bangladesh, come to Bangladesh, invest in Bangladesh. Bangladesh has emerged as the fastest growing economy in the world.
It's a great initiative, uh, it's very good organized, uh, great location, so that also gives a good atmosphere, so uh, well done. I see a number of people's new faces, which is quite uh, interesting for us as an exhibitor to connect the dots. Being at this event really uh, makes me feel part of Bangladesh. That's all, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, sorry, I forgot to thank Vidura. Uh, he was the person who was always working from the behind. Vidura, a big thank you to you. Thanks. Thank you very much, Mr. Mosafizuddin. Now I would like to request to play video recorded message by Mr. Palak Seth, Executive Vice Chairman of PDS Limited. Can we please have the video on screen? It is an honor and privilege to be part of the Bangladesh Climate Action Forum event. Unfortunately, I could not be there in person, but I would like to congratulate Bangladesh Apparel Exchange and Mustafiz to organize another landmark event in Bangladesh in the presence of so many esteemed guests. PDS Group, as a commitment to our industry, has set up a $50 million venture capital fund. The focus of the fund is to invest in five buckets. One is on material science to make sure that anything that goes into source should come from a sustainable basis. Second is on manufacturing technology to make sure that the manufacturing technologies are more sustainable in the future and there's more automation in the industry. Third is on traceability and transparency in the supply chain. Fourth is on circularity to so make sure that when goods leave store, they don't become part of the landfill and become part of the circular economy. And fifth is on basically fashion tech and retail tech. PDS is collaborating with leading retailers and brands like H&M Ventures, Ralph Lauren, bestseller and Inditex to make sure that we co-invest in these opportunities, evaluate the opportunities on a strategic basis and make sure that we are able to move the industry forward in a way that will reduce the impact on overall environment and the climate going forward. PDS is a signatory to United Nations Global Compact to make sure that we move our industry forward so we can all achieve net zero by 2050. Almost 20% 20 of our balance sheet is now invested in innovation as a company. We are not only walking the walk, but we are also talking the talk by the actions we are taking to help move the industry forward. We see Bangladesh as one of our key partner countries. We have a global sourcing organization, but the steps that Bangladesh as a government and the industry and all the manufacturers are taking is world leading and we are sure and we are confident that the way Bangladesh is playing a leadership in sustainability and circularity around the world is going to take the industry forward, not only for the sake of the country, but for the whole world and the industry as one. So I would like to thank Mustafiz and the Bangladesh Apparel Exchange to create this great conference and making sure that you know what results come out of it can have quantifiable results for the future of the industry as well going forward. Thank you very much, Mr. Palak Seth, for the video message. Now I would like to request Mr. Thai Swodstra, Deputy Ambassador, Embassy of the Kingdom of the Netherlands, to give his speech, please. With a round of applause, please welcome the Deputy Ambassador. Honorable State Minister, uh, colleague Michael Kresha, Mustafis, uh, Bangladesh Apparel Exchange. Let me begin by congratulate uh, Bangladesh Apparel Exchange by organizing again such a wonderful seminar uh, on a topic which is very much at the heart of our policy. And I also acknowledge Bangladesh Apparel Exchange in uh, hosting their first uh, event in Europe, in Amsterdam, where the minister was there as well, our capital. Salam alaikum, shubu shukal, and good morning to you all guests. It is a matter of honor and pleasure for me with you to be at this morning, sharing the stage 
With brilliant and important people of this country at the outset, I would also like to convey my sincere thanks again to the organizers of this event and looking forward to engage, listen and interact with keynote speakers and eminent scholars of several sessions and several other stakeholders for sharing their exciting experiences, best practices and approaches in this event today. Bangladesh and the Netherlands both are a Delta country and having differences but similarities when it comes to water-related issues, agriculture and climate change. Both have vast deltas, blessed by the river, and at the same time challenged by the rivers, full of green agricultural lands, and wherever in Bangladesh I go outside, I am greeted warmly and heartfully by these beautiful people of this country. The country is in transition from low to middle income country by 2026, keen to further growth and diversify each, each economy. Despite all the challenges like growing population, climate uncertainties, economic uncertainties, Bangladesh exhibits increasing potential for foreign direct investment and market opportunities, including for the Dutch private sector. <coughs> the cooperation between Bangladesh and the Netherlands is historic. Recent, recently, we have celebrated 50 years of productive and friendly relationship. Traditional, the Netherlands was involved in coastal and river management. However, our cooperation also covered agriculture, food and nutrition security, gender mainstreaming, SRHR, health, family planning, social development and human rights. We have been working with the government and private sector of Bangladesh, including the textiles and fashion industries, cooperating each other on sustainability and green transition as well. As been said, this year, on 4th and 5th September, Bangladesh Apparel Exchange organized Best of Bangladesh in the Netherlands with the support from the Embassy of the Netherlands in Bangladesh. Sustainable and ethical manufacturing were also focused in the event. The event had a strong uh, emphasis on safety, sustainability and ethical manufacturing. Climate change is a reality and uh, as the result of incre increased greenhouse gas emissions. According to UNFCCC, the global textile industries are energy intensive and generate roughly more than 1.2 billion tons of carbon dioxide equivalent or nearly 10% of the worldwide greenhouse gas emissions. The garment industries are considered main, con uh, although, and I agree with that with all speakers, of course Bangladesh only contributes 0.3% of global emissions, garment industry as considered a great contributor of the Bangladeshi greenhouse uh, the gases as the country heavily relates on fossil fuels for electricity supply. Therefore, working on the net zero emission of the industrial sector is a mandate of the day. To mitigate this contribution to greenhouse gas emissions and ultimate climate change, the fashion industry needs to move from a moderate decarbonation trajectory to a more significantly aggressive one. We think about greener business models and create level playing fields. RMG sector already has 195 LEED certified green factories. There has to be an enabling policy environment which provides incentives to assemble more green factories or help factories transition towards a circular uh, way of working. Some RMG factories are already working towards producing green products by using circularity principles bank on producing green RMG products and creating a level playing field so that there are more green factories and businesses and models. So where does the Netherlands come in? In the Netherlands we have developed a plan to reduce in environmental impact of RMG. Dutch producers of RMG, irrespective of the sourcing hub, will be responsible from start to end of an RMG project at least 50% of the RMGs in, sold in the Netherlands should be reusable and recyclable. And this is the extended producer responsibility and it's coming into law soon. Those, so these are the facts we have to deal with. EPR is extended to create a level playing field for transitioning towards a circular production. This is in line with Netherlands aim to become a fully circular economy by 2050. In Bangladesh, we are gradually, uh, gradually aligning our efforts in RMG sector towards circular production too. 
with the aid to trade transition, our, in our bilateral relationship, we combine uh, uh, Netherlands expertise in circularity in the RMD sector to secure green transition. Through the PACT program, Dutch contribution helped the industry save more than half a million ton of greenhouse gases, which correspond, corresponds to taking 900,000 cars off the road. Also, around 29 billion liters of water were saved through this project so far. At the EU level, the Netherlands is committed to rapid, ambitious implementation of the Green Deal. This first whole of government's climate strategy described how we want to strengthen the Dutch response to climate challenges, both domestically and globally. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm really happy that the garments industry are moving forward to contribute to net zero emission of the country, as it's been outlined in the national determined contribution of Bangladesh. And I'm very much looking forward to a matured relationship with opportunities for Dutch private sector to play an important role in technological and management cooperation uh, for a just transition. Finally, I would like to express gratitude to all of you and I wish you a very, very fruitful conference. Thank you all. Very Thank you very much, Mr. Thais Hoodstra. Now I'd like to request Mr. Mihal Kreza, Head of Development Corporation, Delegation of the European Union to Bangladesh, to please come up for his speech. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Mihal Kreza. Um, honorable State Minister, uh, dear fellow panelists, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I have recently arrived in Bangladesh to manage the EU's development cooperation programs. And I would like, first of all, to thank the Bangladesh Apparel Exchange for inviting me to address um, today's Climate Action Forum. The forum has indeed a very well chosen title because action is what we need at all levels, at the government level, at, um, by the citizens and by the private sector. As we all know, Bangladesh has made remarkable economic progress over the past decades, um, ranking among the fastest growing economies in the world. However, Bangladesh is also considered the seventh most vulnerable country in the world to the impacts of climate change. It is confronted with a variety of threats, including flooding, rising sea levels, river erosion, coastal degradation, salinization, and increasingly intense tropical cyclones. So despite Bangladesh's economic and social progress, there is this threat looming on the horizon. And I think that we are here today together to discuss how to counter that threat, who should take action. The response to climate change obviously cannot be limited to public authorities alone. It will need commitment of all through a whole of society approach, including in particular the private sector. Bangladesh is, of course, not alone in facing these challenges. We, as European Union, recognize that climate change and environmental degradation are an existential threat to Europe and the rest of the world. To overcome these challenges, in Europe we have adopted the European Green Deal with the ambition to transform the European Union into a modern, resource-efficient and competitive economy. To do that, we have committed ourselves to ensure that there will be no net emissions of greenhouse gases by 2050, and as a first step, to reduce emissions by at least 55% by 2030, compared to 1990 levels. Getting our European house in order is obviously not sufficient. The climate crisis is a global crisis. We will need to cut emissions all over the world and at the same time we need to increase resilience to climate change. Therefore, the European Union works with developing economies to provide them with the support they need to mitigate and adapt to climate change. The numbers speak for themselves. The European Union, its member states and the European Investment Bank are together the biggest contributor of public climate finance to developing economies providing more than 23 billion euros in 2021 alone. The EU and its member states are also the world's top provider of official development assistance, 
with action to combat climate change being an increasingly large part of our assistance. Our ambition is now particularly manifest, manifested in our global gateway strategy, which aims to tackle the most pressing global challenges. Through the global gateway strategy, we plan to mobilize as much as 300 billion euros between 2021 and 2027 to boost smart, clean and secure links in the digital energy and transport sectors and to strengthen health, education and research across the world. The Global Gateway has now also landed in Bangladesh. Our Team Europe Green Energy Transition aims to scale up investment in renewable energy in this country. To this end, the European Union and our member states are committed to invest a combination of loans and grants totaling 1.3 billion euros in renewable energy financing in Bangladesh. As a first step, the EU alone will soon launch a blended finance renewable energy facility consisting of a 350 million euro loan from the European Investment Bank, accompanied by a 39 million euro investment grant and 6 million euros for technical assistance. Our commitment to climate change in Bangladesh is not limited to renewable energy alone. Let me just give two quick examples. The EU supports the ready-made garment sector in Bangladesh to invest in safety retrofits and environmental upgrades together with AFD and GIZ, the French and German development agencies, as well as KFW, the German development bank. This program takes the form of a 50 million euro credit facility to Bangladesh Bank, combined with another 14 million for technical assistance and a performance grant. We also aim to support the construction sector towards a green transition through the transformation of the brick kiln industry and the promotion of what we call green bricks. This 10 million euro intervention is currently under development and envisages cooperation with the private sector, also with a view to eventually scaling up financing. With regard to the future, we are currently reviewing the portfolio of our multi-annual program, which runs until 2027. Climate change and the required green energy transition will most certainly remain a top priority. The investments required for climate mitigation and adaptation will require extensive involvement of the private sector. In Europe, private companies are key enablers to fight climate change, mainly for three reasons. First, through direct investment in research and development or indirect investments in, in, in innovative startups. Second, by exercising soft power with all stakeholders along the value chain, from suppliers to customers to employees, and third, by scaling up green investments. I would say that this logic could also apply here in Bangladesh, but this would need to go way beyond the somewhat one-dimensional image in which the private sector seems to be commonly displayed which is either as a cause of climate change or as a potential source of funding or even as a victim. There is a bit of truth, of course, in all of that. Businesses are a cause of greenhouse gas emissions, they can financially support climate mitigation and they are affected by climate change in their day-to-day -day business and investment decisions. However, this does not do justice to the important role that the private sector has in innovation and investment in new technologies, for which there seems to be great potential here in Bangladesh. Let me make just three very quick points. A recent OECD study funded by the EU stated that only 1.2% of firms in Bangladesh invest in research and development. Further investment in innovation and R&D capacity towards more sustainable and eco-friendly production is therefore highly needed. There could be great potential to invest in R&D also with leading universities in Bangladesh or in strategic alliances with foreign companies. There should also be potential to explore and expand the potential of green lending operations and of green bonds, for instance in renewable energy. 
The European Investment Bank has considerable experience with this and has been instrumental in the operationalization of the green bond market in Europe. One final aspect I wish to mention is that companies in the manufacturing sector should actively seek opportunities for introducing circular economy in their operations. As my Dutch colleague already mentioned, there are some good examples of reuse and recycling of materials in the RMG sector, but these will need to be replicated and scaled up. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's use today's conference to discuss the roles of business as an enabler for the green transition. Or, in other words, the role of business as a force which is not only confronted with the effects of climate change, but which generates ideas, initiatives, investment and innovation that will be able to transform Bangladesh into a climate-resilient, prosperous society. I wish you an excellent conference. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Mihal Kereza. Now I'd like to request our chief guest, Mr. Mohammad Sharir Alam, MP, Honorable State Minister, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Government of the People's Republic of Bangladesh, to please come up for his speech. With a round of applause, please welcome Honorable State Minister. Distinguished participants, uh, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, uh, assalamu alaikum and a very good morning. Uh, I thank the Bangladesh April Exchange, uh, especially Mustafiz and his uh, brilliant team for organizing the first ever uh, Bangladesh Climate Action Forum, and for inviting us. The theme of the event, delivering climate action through technology, innovation, and collaborative finance uh, for a just transition, has recently gained uh, sufficient momentum and traction in climate change discourse, both uh, nationally, of course, and internationally. I appreciate Bangladesh April Exchange for bringing such an important issue to the forefront, especially uh, to the business community. Uh, dear participants, uh, Bangladesh, uh, as you all know, is uh, one of the least contributor uh, to global carbon emission, uh, which uh, with our share uh, being around 0.4 percent, round about that, yeah. We have Dr. Solimul Haq, uh, it's always a pleasure listening to him and uh, he will be telling you much more in a lot more detail, a very widely uh, uh, recognized uh, practitioner and activist at the same time. Uh, yet, uh, we are among the worst uh, sufferers. Uh, I think we all know that story. Uh, we experienced approximately uh, over 11 billion in losses in 2021 due to climate-related um, natural disaster, which is roughly 2.4% of our total GDP during uh, 2021 and 2022. The current annual average rate of loss to GDP is approximately 1.3%. Uh, which may rise to 2% by 2050. And I think we need to remind ourselves when we listen and read these numbers, 1.3 or 2, uh, many countries in this world uh, will be very happy if they can achieve a 2% growth year on year. But our loss alone due to climate crisis will be accounting for almost 2% by 2050. Uh, if the present trend of sea level rise uh, persists uh, due to global warming, it may cause about 12% to 18% of our coastal area uh, to be submerged uh, by the century. And people who are well acquainted with the uh, southern part of Bangladesh uh, have uh, seen for themselves a uh, high level of salinity, intrusion, uh, loss of agricultural land, and so on and so forth. Uh, it is estimated that the number of internal, internal climate migrants uh, may reach to 20 million uh, by 2050. And that also alone uh, is a number uh, uh, equates to the population of uh, some uh, small island developing nation and some countries in Europe uh, as well. Since we have two great friends, uh, they can relate, uh, uh, I think. Uh, you came from Fiji, as you said, and the population itself in Fiji is a lot less than that number of our internal displaced person. So that's the level of uh, intensity that uh, we are facing or we need to prepare ourselves for in future. Uh, amid such daunting challenges, uh, we have long placed ourselves as a leading actor in climate action. We were among the first countries that established Climate Change Trust Fund with our own resources as well as adopted climate change strategy and action plan. 
our trust fund uh, with an investment of around 490 million US dollar has so far supported more than 850 adaptation and resilience projects in the vulnerable areas of the country. Emphasizing homegrown solution, we launched the global hub on locally laid adaptation last year in Dhaka, demonstrating our readiness to share expertise and best practices with other vulnerable nations. We have also been making efforts towards a low carbon development path with an increasing emphasis on uh, renewable energy and energy efficiency. We have established the largest solar home system in the world covering 20 million people in the country. Consequently, we have witnessed an upward trend in investment in clean and renewable energy in both the uh, public and private sectors. Currently, Bangladesh has 187 lead certified factories and probably many of you are uh, present here uh, who first initiated this great initiative. Uh, among the top 10 lead certified factories units in the world, eight are from Bangladesh. Uh, this attests to our successful efforts towards green growth and the creation of green jobs. And again, when I read out these numbers, I think uh, we can do a small research. Most of us can take an initiative. Uh, this Almost 200 large lead certified factories, whether they are platinum, gold, or silver, or regular ones. Uh, I think uh, after stab establishment of so many factories, our per unit carbon emission must be one of the lowest in the world, right? Among the competing countries, whether you compare that with Cambodia, or China, or India, or Vietnam, uh, the very presence of 200. Uh, almost 200 green factories uh, would equate to a relatively low carbon emission. I think we, uh, especially I'd be requesting our development partners to take good note of that. And uh, that's a very encouraging uh, development. And that's the industry-led initiative because no one actually told these factory owners to go green as such, even though we highly appreciate uh, the collaboration that uh, some of the brands who initiated it and uh, I remember when I was exiting uh, my uh, previous job as an entrepreneur and uh, uh, as a full-time garment manufacturer uh, way back in 2006 and 2007, uh, we started some initiatives like rainwater harvesting uh, and so I, we are grateful to our uh, partners, uh, especially some of the high street brands and retailers who initiated this uh, uh, almost 15 years ago. Uh, dear participants, uh, in our unwavering pursuit of climate resilience, we have intensified our focus uh, on a just transition by fostering a green economy. This transition will not only reduce future welfare liabilities, but also boost tax revenues. Uh, our goal is to achieve this transformation in a manner that is equitable and inclusive offering meaningful job opportunities and ensuring no one is left behind. Uh, within our landmark Mujib Climate Prosperity Plan, MCCP, uh, we envision building such ability. This will include reskilling and upskilling uh, labor forces by technical and vocational education and training, as well as through improved efficiency from the use of automation. In this regard, we have made a target of reskilling 3.83 million people, cost of which could be as much as US dollar uh, 1.5 by 2030. I have also, uh, we have also made target of creating 4.1 million new climate resilient jobs and reducing unemployment to 3.9% by 2030. Although the fulfillment of the commitments by the developed nation uh, to mobilize climate fund uh, has remained elusive, we have done our part to the maximum extent possible. And we are also encouraging others by leading uh, from the front. We adopted climate fiscal framework known as CFF to make climate inclusive public financial management uh, system. Our government has increased climate related budgetary allocation by more than two and a half times in the last one decade. During uh, fiscal year 2022-2023, the Cumulative budget allocation of the most relevant ministries was 55.82% uh, of the total national budget, which is uh, highly significant. Our national adaptation plan for 2023 to 2050 aims to mobilize climate financing through innovative financing such as green or blue bonds, 
risk transfer mechanism or insurance and private sector investment and a boost in harnessing global climate finance such as green climate fund and bilateral multilateral funds and we are looking forward as we discussed very closely with the European Investment Bank in coming days in this regard. In addition to financing, technology and innovation uh, would also have a significant role for the first or for the just transition to a greener economy. Under the Mujib Climate uh, uh, Fund, uh, we have identified significant opportunities for technology transfer, partnership and building manufacturing capacity in Bangladesh, including in areas such as green hydrogen, solar, uh, electric vehicles, uh, modernized uh, power grid, uh, and other resilient uh, quality infrastructures. Uh, and as we have waited long and seen transformative changes in Bangladesh, I think some of the things that I have just mentioned, you will see uh, physical, very uh, obvious uh, changes uh, in next uh, five years or so. Uh, as you know, uh, two um, uh, automobile manufacturing companies are already uh, in the final stage of bringing their product in the market and so is uh, modernizing the grid, uh, uh, smart grid by uh, the government with the help of our development partners. Uh, dear participants, uh, despite our efforts uh, with our own resources and public uh, and policy uh, frameworks, uh, it is never sufficient uh, without mobilizing resources from external sources. Funds available in the hands of multilateral development banks must be easily accessible with less conditions climate financing commitments under various international framework must be implemented. Uh, the US dollar 100 billion pledge uh, under uh, Paris Agreement uh, must talk about subject and uh, uh, must be fulfilled. Uh, and uh, our um, hope and demand is uh, with 50-50 distribution uh, between uh, uh, adaptation and mitigation projects. Uh, the commitment to supporting the developing countries in technology uh, development and transfer must also be executed. And we have made inroads, so we don't have much time, but uh, uh, I can go on and uh, share a list of things that we are uh, working on. Uh, we have successfully concluded uh, with countries like Netherlands and many other European countries, but also uh, in the neighborhoods in, within Asia, uh, countries like Japan uh, and Korea is coming forward and sharing uh, technologies uh, with us. Uh, lastly, uh, it is imperative to invest in trade collaboration both within regions um, and internationally to ensure the green growth. This investment can have compounding positive impacts in the realms of science, technology and innovation. In this regard, active involvement uh, of the private sector, which is the focus of uh, this day-long uh, program. Uh, uh, this private sector can foster um, uh, effective uh, partnership to realize the goal uh, of just uh, transition. Uh, I hope that in Bangladesh, uh, governments, uh, private sector uh, and uh, international partners, uh, brands uh, and all other stakeholders can closely work together to explore, uh, enhance, uh, strengthen uh, such collaboration. Uh, I wish uh, this uh, first ever uh, initiative uh, for uh, by uh, Bangladesh Apparel Exchange uh, uh, for this uh, Bangladesh Climate Action Forum uh, 2023 uh, a grand success, and I think uh, governments uh, will uh, we will have uh, some uh, inputs uh, in terms of uh, what uh, private sector is aspiring and what some of the international partners uh, can help. Uh, to uh, implement uh, the NDC that we went on to uh, present and we are committed. Uh, once again, I wish a grand success of this event. Thank you so much for inviting us. Joy Bangla. Joy Bangla.